Good morning, everybody. Hello from Atlanta. On behalf of uh, US India Business Summit and Georgia Tech Global Business Forum, it's my honor and privilege to welcome everybody from Atlanta, from Georgia, from USA, and from India and other countries. I'm a co chair of US India Business Summit. We have been working very closely with Dr. John McIntyre. Uh, for the last 11 years in hosting US India Business Summit and Georgia Tech Global Business Forum. It is, uh, uh, this is our first year when we are doing this program virtually and uh, we may face uh, encounter some challenges. So please bear with us. Uh, it's not easy to transform a live program to go virtual that too in two tracks with 50 plus speakers. Uh, now it's my honor to introduce uh, Dr. John McIntyre, co-chair for Georgia Tech Global Business Forum. Dr. McIntyre. Thank you, Annie. It's a pleasure, pleasure yet again to be here. Uh, an idea that started in 1994 uh, as the first Georgia Tech Global Business Forum, which allied forces with the US-India Business Summit uh, 11 years ago in putting together a first class program delivered to our audience in the Southeast, in Georgia in particular, but also to other interested audiences worldwide. We are powered uh, by virtual means and therefore can reach a much broader audience. We have surveyed extensively previous participants over the last 26 years, and they have told us this year that there are six topics of interest, and it's an ambitious agenda we have laid today, but let me quickly review what we are going to be dealing with in two tracks over two days. You have the program, please look at it. You have all the connections allowing you to shift from track to track according to your interest. We're first looking at the southeastern region of the United States as an emerging global manufacturing region. I've been in Georgia long enough and I'm a doctoral graduate of the University of Georgia the sister institution of Georgia Tech, might I say, to remember the long trek that Georgia has undertaken in the 1970s to become really a global platform in the Southeast region. So this will be a topic of interest address. The second one is innovation in the pandemic and post-pandemic period. Clearly, these are the best and these are the worst of times at one and the same time. We have challenges, but we also have the means to overcome these challenges and part of the message in this conference is precisely this. The third issue we have selected is cybersecurity and infrastructure, ITC infrastructure in particular. The fourth issue, which I think is very important, particularly at this point in time, is the issue of reshoring and nearshoring of global supply chains that were somewhat broken uh, since the beginning of the year. The fifth issue is uh, COVID's digital transformation, which we're all feeling, whether you're in higher education or manufacturing or other areas. And finally, we are very proud to uh, introduce India Goes Global, which provides a unique mirror benchmark to assess how a leapfrogging economic development in India can accelerate modernization and produce job creating opportunities. So welcome. We look forward to a very challenging and interesting uh, two days. Uh, track one as a great speaker whom I will be introducing. If you're following track one today, I look forward to doing it. Thank you. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Now, I we have uh, a pre-recorded message from Dr. Mariam Alavi, Dean of uh, Sheller College of Business. Hi, everyone. I'm Maryam Alabi, Dean of the Scheller College of Business at Georgia Tech. Welcome to the 26th Annual Georgia Tech Global Business Forum and the 11th USA India Business Summit entitled Global Advanced Industries Accelerating Local Opportunities. During the next two days, you will hear from more than 40 expert speakers on the following six themes. The Southeast US as a global manufacturing region, innovation in the post pandemic period, virtualization, cybersecurity, and IT infrastructure, reshoring and nearshoring global supply chains, COVID 19 impact on digital transformation, 
and the globalization of Indian enterprises. I welcome all participants and particularly want to express my appreciation of those of you joining from distance locations around the world. Georgia Tech's Scheller College of Business is truly a global thought leader, and we are honored to be hosting this prestigious event. I hope you will find the presentations informative and insightful. Once again, welcome. Thank you, Miriam. We next move on to uh, Dr. Yves Bertolo, another representative of Georgia Tech. Uh, Miriam is the Dean of our Scheller College of Business, which is one of the leading business schools in the United States, highly ranked uh, and very much in the forefront of management of technology and technology serving business and the business community. Uh, Eve, Eve is our uh, Vice Provost for International Initiatives and it's quite an undertaking that he oversees, including overseas campuses overseas scholars visiting our campus, which are very an important part of Georgia Tech, and lots of international students at the graduate level in particular. So it's a pleasure to have him to uh, help us in greeting the audience. Well, thank you, John. Um, I, I'm really delighted to welcome uh, all the participants to the 11th uh, U.S. India Business Summit and the 26th uh, Global Business Forum, quite an achievement. Uh, the theme of the summit is very timely, and uh, I looked at the program, and frankly, the, the list of speakers and is really impressive. So uh, I really want to thank uh, John and Annie for, and the team, really, for putting together such a great program despite the pandemic. Uh, just last week, uh, I had the pleasure of uh, welcoming... Uh, uh, the Consul General from India, Dr. Kulkarni, to Georgia Tech uh, for a personal meeting with our president, uh, Dr. Cabrera. And they had a great discussion, really trying to see, uh, explore ways to reinforce even further uh, the ties between Georgia Tech and, and India. We do have uh, deep ties. We have a lot of students from China. 1,200 students, uh, uh, that's almost 25% uh, of our international students. And that's not counting, of course, the first and second generation Indian students. We, we have really deep ties through our students. Many of them are grad, most of them are graduate students. And they come and many of, of them end up staying and, and, and starting businesses and being very active in the United States. So very, very deep ties and we're very proud of that. Uh, clearly, George Tech is a, a very global institution. Uh, I, I like to brag that close to 60% of our undergrads uh, have a significant experience uh, studying abroad uh, before they graduate. Of course, that was before the pandemic. The pandemic has decimated all the study abroad around the world, but hopefully things will get back uh, soon. Uh, Dr. Cabrera, our president, re re said again the, the importance of global engagement in our new strategic plan, uh, which will be released very, very soon. One of the key themes is very uh, well aligned with this uh, uh, U.S.-India Business Summit. The theme is connect globally with strong local roots and broad local reach. Uh, very important theme for the, the future of Georgia Tech. Uh, so the U.S.-India Business Summit really is a perfect vehicle to connect and detect synergies and create new business opportunities. And Georgia Tech uh, is very proud to be part of this ecosystem. It is truly in our mission to be an agent in that ecosystem. So I hope you will enjoy the, the conference. It's a great, ambitious conference, great themes, and truly remarkable speakers. Uh, so thank you, stay safe, and back to you, John. Thank you very much, Eve. Thank Indeed, you. Georgia Tech has a long history of relationships with India, going back, in fact, to the pre-World War II period, when Indian students were in our midst studying at Georgia Tech. Many of our colleagues in faculty and research are originally from India, having studied in the United States and undertaken their career path in the United States and excelled at Georgia Tech as researchers and help us to really achieve the global status that is that of Georgia Tech as an institution. 
Uh, in Cheller College, we uh, have many colleagues from India and we're very proud of being of working with them. We next turn to Mary Waters, who is the Deputy Commissioner for International Trade in the Georgia Department of Economic Development. I can remember when that department was called something else. I go back long enough to have really worked with the late Governor George Busby in the late 70s when I went to the Dean Rusk Center at the University of Georgia Law School. And the state of Georgia was becoming an important state in uh, the National Governors Association relating to international issues. So it's a pleasure to have you. I know your department has really come a long way and you have representations, I recall, I think, in 14 different locations, regional and country locations. And of course, Georgia's trade levels with the world are absolutely a marvel to look at uh, on the page in numbers. So it's a pleasure to have you to help us greet our participants. Mary, the floor is yours. Wonderful, John, thank you so much. Um, and good morning, everyone. It really is a pleasure to, to be here this morning and to join you all for the US-India Business Summit and the Georgia Tech Global Business Forum. And so the Department of Economic Development here in Georgia, we've been a proud sponsor of this event since 2010. Um, and we continue to support uh, because this is this format and this engagement between academia and industry and students and, and really this rich exchange is such a tremendous opportunity for companies to stay on top of global business trends and really uh, explore new opportunities, not just in the Indian uh, market, um, but beyond and, and really have a, a truly global view of, of what's driving um, global business. And so for those of you who might not be aware, the Georgia Department of Economic Development we are really the sales and marketing arm for the state of Georgia. So we're selling Georgia in a lot of different ways, uh, but our, our mission is, is always singular and that's to increase jobs and grow investment all across the state of Georgia. Um, and there are many different divisions that are working in different facets of economic development, but um, really international engagement is, is a key component of our job creation mission. It's really part and parcel of, of everything that we do. We, we very much keep a, a strong eye on building international partnerships. And so through our international engagement collectively, um, we are really seeking to enhance the international profile of our state uh, we are promoting increased foreign direct investment into Georgia, um, which we continue to see a very strong pipeline. Um, even in the current moment, um, our investment pipeline is, is very strong um, and we're seeing new, new announcements every day. We continue to, uh, to work to spur an increase in Georgia exports to the world. Again, that's a more challenging moment um, for exporters globally, um, but we're, we're doing everything that we can uh, for our companies to have um, a relatively smooth recovery and, and kind of get back to those um, record setting numbers that I think we're now somewhat used to seeing in Georgia. Um, but really, uh, at the end of the day, our, our goal is also to, to foster innovation and to really spur collaboration that helps our businesses succeed. And, and that's a, a mission that we take very seriously. Um, India continues to be a, a critically important economic partner for our state. Um, and to talk about numbers, um, since John, you, you mentioned the numbers. Um, um, last year, our bilateral trade exceeded $3.2 billion. Um, and so that makes India the 10th largest trading partner for our state. Uh, certainly, we would like to see, uh, see that number and that ranking grow. Uh, India was also the 11th largest customer of Georgia-made and Georgia-grown products last year. Uh, so that's something that, that I'm always happy to see since my primary responsibility is uh, helping Georgia companies succeed uh, in the Indian market and beyond. Um, but really, as, as a couple of the other speakers have mentioned, really our ties are so much deeper than, than just economic. Uh, we share very strong governmental ties uh, and educational and cultural ties that really support and bolster the economic relationship. And, and that's incredibly important. Uh, the Consulate General of India in the Southeast is very active here in Georgia. We're very proud of that. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't speak about the educational uh, alliances 
uh, that are really critical to fostering innovation that, that keeps our companies competitive um, and that provides our state with a really qualified workforce to, to keep growth happening. Um, and that's really so important in a, in a critically shifting economy. Um, and the numbers I have are, are just about a year old. So the numbers that I'm, I'm showing that are as of 2018, there were more than 4,100 Indian students studying at just at the public universities in Georgia. And so when you add in private institutions, that number um, does grow. A and I really cannot overstate the importance of these students to, um, and the importance of these educational connections to creating a strong foundation for business partnerships. Um, if for any of you who have heard me speak before, I've, I've spoken about this. Um, when you have foreign students that study here, they, they build relationships and they have a fondness and, and they, they create um, this linkage to Georgia that they take with them for their whole lives. And those students today are tomorrow's business leaders. And so it's incredibly important. Um, they're an incredibly important um, aspect to, to Georgia's economic development um, strategy. And, and when we're trying to put Georgia on the map for, um, for international business, educational outreach is, is very much part of that. Um, you know, I would just say from, from my vantage point, clearly the pandemic is, is causing a lot of us to ask questions about how international business will be conducted in the future, um, what changes, what only temp changes temporarily, um, and what is, is truly disruptive to, to international business. But that comes with all kinds of implications for the future of global supply chains. Again, reshoring and nearshoring initiatives, not just here in the United States, but around the world. Um, you know, inventory, are we seeing, are we going to see any shifts in, you know, just in time inventory management to, to also help address supply chain issues. Um, and, and I think it has companies all across the world asking, um, you know, how can they better serve their customers, their local customers uh, in the, the current environment. Um, so clearly the, the pandemic is creating disruption and I'm really looking forward to to the speakers today and tomorrow to, to sharing their insights on, on how, um, uh, how this is developing. Uh, but to my mind, global connections are really more important now than ever. Um, and companies that are able to understand and adapt to these new opportunities in global markets will be better positioned for stronger growth. Um, and so global engagement and international business development and, and truly understanding the trends and opportunities that shape international markets do help our companies sustain themselves um, and really position themselves for, for growth in the years to come. Um, and so with that, I, I will again just say that the Department of Economic Development is a proud sponsor of this event. Um, I, we applaud the, the shift to the virtual format. Uh, I'm really looking forward to both tracks uh, over, over two days. Um, and just want to thank the organizers for again, reaching out to us and, and for a very successful conference. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. We appreciate you. the support of the Georgia Department of Economic Development. We have worked with you for a long time, not only this particular medium forum, uh, but also Georgia Tech uh, feeds you quite a few uh, students as well as potential employees in uh, helping Georgia's uh, objectives of really uh, making a, having a global footprint in a range of markets. I would like to ask you one quick question. What are some of the locations where the state of Georgia uh, is represented in the world where you have office representations? I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I think that's an interesting bit of information to show the range of uh, representation efforts, not only for Georgia, but for the southeastern region outside of the United States who may not be aware of the global nature of this region and state. Thank you, John. Um, yes, so you were, you were very close. The state actually has representation in 12 markets across the world. Um, not 14 yet, although we're hoping someday to be able to, to grow our international footprint, um, but we're, we're really quite diverse. Um, I, I sometimes have to go based on geography, but, uh, but we're very heavily represented um, across the Americas. Uh, we have representation in Canada, in Mexico, uh, Colombia, uh, Peru, Chile, and Brazil in the Americas. 
Um, in Europe, we, we do have uh, an office uh, in Europe based in Munich, Germany, and that was actually along with our office in Tokyo, Japan, those were Georgia's first two international uh, representation offices that were opened in 1973. Um, and those offices have never closed. And so um, something that is very important for us in the state and particularly at the department um, is that we're in these markets for the long term. And we're now coming up on a nearly 50 years in some of these markets. And I think that uh, explains a lot about Georgia's commitment to, to international growth. Um, but we also have uh, an office in the UK um, that that is going to become a bit more um, important after January 1st when, when Brexit is a, a done deal. Um, and we also have representation in Israel. Um, and in Asia, we have representation in China, Japan, and South Korea. Um, and so many of those, those um, offices start out as trade offices. So they really start out helping Georgia exporters get into the market. Um, we all know that, that trade does lead to investment and vice versa. So, so that does create a good pipeline for, for then um, investment attraction functions to, to um, happen within those international offices. And then we get that really good and dynamic two-way trade, trade flow. Thank you for this uh, nutshell picture, uh, providing us with an overview of uh, where the state of Georgia is spreading its wings across boundaries. Thank you very much indeed. We next turn to George Tracy, whom I've known for quite a while. George is the director of uh, the U.S. Expo Center, International Trade Administration of the U.S. Department of Commerce, the U.S. Foreign Commercial Service, the U.S. FCS in the Atlanta office, which is quite an important office, field office, in a number of offices throughout the United States and in fact throughout the world. So it's a pleasure to have you uh, here join us in uh, helping us greet our audience in this annual effort that we put on together with our U.S. India friends. Well, thanks, John. Appreciate it. And welcome, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, to the organizers, Ani, John, to, for inviting us. Um, I think we've been involved since the inception. It's hard to believe it's been 11 years since, since we've been doing this. But uh, I think it's an indication of just what an outstanding program this is. Of course, India is one of our largest trading partners and continues to be one of the countries with more opportunity than than most globally for, the, for U.S. companies. So uh, yeah, welcome, pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. For those of you that aren't familiar with our organization, um, U.S. Commercial Service actually rolls up into the International Trade Administration, which is actually part of the Department of Commerce. So we're a federal organization and our mission is to grow jobs, U.S. jobs. And our, our organization does that by helping companies, <clears throat> excuse me, typical small and mid-sized companies export. We work in very close coordination with our partners like Mary over at the state of Georgia uh, and other partners. Uh, we're lucky here in Georgia to have one of the strongest international trade ecosystems, uh, I believe in the country. And uh, we have offices throughout the United States we have at least one office in every state. Some offices, more than one here in Georgia, we have an office here in Atlanta and an office in Savannah. Uh, but probably equally as important, we have offices around the world in 85 countries. So just about any place a business would want to do business, uh, we actually have an office. And in India, we have offices throughout the country, uh, commercial officers operating out of the embassies and the consulates. And their sole job there is to interact with U.S. businesses and help them penetrate the Indian and other markets. So for those of you on the call, if you're not already working with us, please reach out. You can reach out directly to me and I can put you in touch with your local office. Um, but the organization, we really can, can help your company expand internationally. Uh, so with that, Ani, again, thank you. Welcome to the program. I'm looking forward to a fantastic couple of days of very interesting topics. I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot and uh, pass it back to you. Good morning, David. Good morning, y'all. Uh, good to see you. Um, I'm looking at the list of people who are online, quite a few people, and I, a lot of my good friends are on there. Thank you for inviting me, Ani. I greatly appreciate it. Um, so on behalf of the Metro Atlanta Chamber, I'm pleased uh, to join this esteemed group. Um, I think it's the 11th annual U.S. India Business Summit and the 26th, if I'm not mistaken, Georgia Tech Global Business Forum. Started in 94. Well, boy. 
it's been a long, long time. Um, the Metro Atlanta Chamber, as many of you may know, um, partner with this event for many, many years. Ani's taken me to India, I can't tell you how many times, and it's been a wonderful experience. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, one of our, we're one of the oldest chambers in the nation. A lot of people may not know that. We date back to 1859. And the Metro Atlanta Chamber represents the business community of 29 county metropolitan regions. So when we say Atlanta, we mean really a large swath of Georgia, 29 counties. Um, you know, we work with the state and local governments, academic interests, the consulate corps, trade offices, and a wide range of organizations, as you could imagine, individuals, to grow Atlanta. And in fact, that's our hashtag. So it was created by our communications team. If you're interested in, you know, agnostic, you know, materials, um, our communications team developed a branding toolbox. Doesn't say the chamber, has no name on it, just some great imagery and good content. Um, it's on our website to check it out if that's something of interest to you. I happen to lead the economic development division, which consists of global commerce team, which is led by John Woodward and Michael Tyson Jones. Um, focusing on cross-border trade and investment. And then we have an ecosystem team, which really builds the clusters that are here and, and creates clusters that are true roots, meaning they started here. And that's led by Grant Wainscott. And some of those key clusters, supply chain, as you could well imagine, that's what Atlanta is known for, terminus. You know, that's where it all used to end and, and begin. And I like to say that Atlanta is the uh, the entrance and exit to the world. So coming in and going out. So supply chain is very rich. FinTech, as many of you know, we have about 70 some odd percent of every transaction, uh, uh, shaking of the hands, call it. I've got the routing number, you have the account number. So when that actual financial transaction starts um, and, and concludes, it comes to Atlanta. Back in the day, it literally used to come from call it Charlotte, down to Jacksonville, it would come to Atlanta and it would clear. And that's why they call us Transaction Alley. Um, and so there are others, of course, many. Cybersecurity, esports, entertainment, as you well know, we're now, we're, we're larger than um, Hollywood as it relates to, um, uh, they call it tentpole films or big, massive feature films. Um, digital media, med tech, global health, uh, smart city IoT, and many others. And then our project management team is really who works with the state, the Georgia Department of Economic Development, cities and, and others uh, to bring projects here and help those that are here to grow. So you've probably seen several of the Fortune 1000 announcements over the past couple of years. And that team has been in great part, um, uh, the team that put it together and, and worked with the partners to make it happen. Uh, nothing can be done in this state without the Georgia Department of Economic Development. So we thank Mary and, uh, Pat Wilson and, and the team for all that you do, the marketing that you do around the world is just phenomenal. Everything's about shining the light on Atlanta if we want to get people here. So we're trying to shine the light on Atlanta, but also the southeastern region of which it is a part. <laughs> yep, absolutely right. Now I'll say that our responsibility as the chamber is the 29 counties, but I will tell you um, projects that come into Savannah, it doesn't matter where in the state, we will help to work on those because we know if it lands anywhere in the state, it's good for business. And with our esteemed board of directors, and you could well imagine who they are, but they are all the major corporations, we leverage the relationships that they have to help build those international awareness tactics and strategies. Because you think about the organization's Coca-Cola is a perfect example. They're everywhere in the world. And so we, we work with them to carry that message. So I do agree with you wholeheartedly. And that's also something that Mary and uh, Pat Wilson would make sure that I say. So thank you for bringing that out. But one area that really does help is the public policy division. You know, we work very diligently on the Georgia business climate and infrastructure. And if there's legislation that's going on that's not business friendly, then we want to make sure that we're addressing that. And then when there are those legislators who are business friendly, we want to help them to succeed. So that helps. And, you know, what we love to say is we're the top U.S. state for business. And it's not us rating that. That is the independent third party organization that we look to as the site selectors look to uh, to find out where's the best place to do business. And it ends up being Atlanta in some cases in one 
um, area. It was six years in a row and then another one in seven years in a row. And nobody's ever got close to that. I think Dallas got four in a row one time and, and North Carolina got four or five in a row, but nobody's got as many as we have. And it just, it, it, it really has to do with a lot of the things that we're going to hear today. So, and then I guess I'll end with this, you know, uh, even though we're virtual, the content and the speakers and the lineup as usual is awesome. Um, I was reading through, looking at bios, doing some LinkedIn last night to make sure that I'm connected with some of the speakers that I had not been connected to. And I was just thoroughly impressed with what's going on. So kudos to the program organizers and many thanks to the impressive speakers for sharing your insight and expertise. And please count on the chamber. We literally work you know, for you all. So if you need info, you need insight, you need connections, please come to Ani and Ani will certainly give me a call and uh, we're here to support you in any way we can. Thank Don't you. forget that you can knock on Georgia Tech's door and there are many doors at Georgia Tech. They're like a beehive any time of the night and any time of the day. I have a question for you, David. Uh, driving by the population clock on uh, Piedmont, I noticed that we had finally passed the 7 million mark, at least as acknowledged by the population clock for the greater Atlanta area. So, million and 54,000 or something of that nature. So we are a large global metropolitan area. That should have a, a remark. It's a remarkable achievement in terms of numbers, but also in terms of growth in the midst of this pandemic, we're still seeing an incredible amount of real estate construction and development in our city. Yes, there's no doubt. And, you know, we, in fact, it's kind of, in some ways, it's hard to believe, frankly, but these projects have been in the midst for many, many years. And if you think about Microsoft, for instance, you're putting their cloud, their Azure cloud division uh, in uh, Atlantic City, Atlantic um, Station, uh, that's 1,500 Microsoft professionals that are coming in. And then recently, you've seen um, some information on the, uh, uh, the land that they just purchased for, I think it was $117 million, right over by Georgia Tech, so really between the... Um, the reservoir, the water reservoir and uh, uh, Grove Park area all the way, you know, to Georgia Tech, that area there is going to grow just exponentially. And one area in Georgia Tech that I'm very excited about is Technology Enterprise Park, which is right on North Avenue. Um, it, it started off as a bioscience park and it has some amazing assets. Even in the area, there's a vivarium, as you may know, that's animal testing, and you need to have that if you're going to put um, devices in human bodies. And so they're very, very, very advanced. It's a global center for medical in innovation. They do uh, everything from the beginning of a FDA regulations. How do you market a product in the United States? And all the way through tooling to product commercialization. And that's being led right now by uh, Sherry Ferugia. Uh, wonderful asset for Georgia Tech. Dr. Cabrera, when I met with him, we've met with him several times. He's also on our board. What an amazing man. I'm just excited to have him involved. It's great to have an international perspective. You know, President Peterson, I, I knew for many, many years. And, you know, I can't even imagine where Georgia's gonna, Georgia Tech's going to be in 10 years. I'm just so proud to market Georgia Tech. Another feature, and I say that uh, in view of the fact that uh, our next speaker, Dr. Mashal Kar, is online with us from India, and he is one of the global authorities on innovation, is that our city, our region, uh, our state, has developed some world-class innovation clusters. Can you Do you want to say a few words about the process of innovation, Atlanta as an innovation city? Oh, yeah. I'll, be, I'll quick. On, I can go forever on that one. I know you can. I, I, we, I mean, we're almost at the end of our time. <laughs> okay. I'll be very quick. One that I'm sure you're all aware of, and it's uh, not anything we marketed, frankly. It is something that we now have been able to jump in on, and that's global health. And if you think about, you know, the uh, CDC, we put together 43 global entities that are headquartered nowhere else but Atlanta including the Task Force for Global Health, which is the second largest nonprofit in America after the United Way, has marketed actually moves product around the world, over $3 billion worth of product to indigent populations all around the world. So when you think about Atlanta, we not only begin the science here, we solve the problems. In fact, the gentleman who started that uh, Task Force for Global Health is Bill Faggy, former director of the CDC. He's attributed to being the human being who has saved more human beings on planet Earth than anyone else. 
and he's in Atlanta, and that's because of his work on smallpox. So if you're looking at innovation, particularly in it, in, as it relates to, to uh, global health, Atlanta is the place. And I'll just leave one website and then I'll end. It's um, www.globalhealth, the letter C, 3.org. And it stands for uh, Global Health Crisis Coordination Center, which is a joint venture with the CDC Foundation and the organization that we founded a couple years ago. Thank you so much, David. Thank, Thank you, David. you of the other presenters this morning to kick us off. Annie, I'm turning it back to you before Thank I you. introduce our track one speaker. Yes. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you, David. I really appreciate your remarks. And uh, we ought to have you uh, in our program next time to talk about innovation in Atlanta. You know, that's a good segue from this thing, you know. I, I, I want to ask uh, Mary and George a question about, uh, you know, uh, Mary, you mentioned that India uh, business with Georgia is 11th as a state. Um, 10th overall, when you look at bilateral trade, so imports and exports, just Perfect. looking as a Georgia export market, it's 11th, yes. Oh, sure. So as uh, this is USA-India Business Summit, uh, what do you think we, folks like myself, can do to promote business with trade and commerce uh, with Georgia? You know, how do we bring it to number eight, number five? I mean... Trade numbers grow on each other, right? And, and, and trade always tends to be a more of a lagging indicator than a leading indicator. But I would say just continuing to share, um, to share real areas of opportunity that are a good match with, um, with Georgia's strategic industries. So whether that's aerospace, um, advanced manufacturing, whether that's FinTech, um, you know, so much of the work that, um, that my team does is with small and mid-sized companies. Um, and so for those companies, uh, half the battle for us is making sure that we get to the right company with the right market that's truly a fit for, for the, the level of dedication that they have to exporting, um, getting to the, to the companies with the right message at the right time, and so education is really key and just continuing to, um, to share information about um, what kind of sectors are opening up, the economic reforms in India, and, and really drawing a direct line to um, what that means for small business here in Georgia um, to find the right partners and to actually be able to do business in India. That sort of constant messaging will move the needle um, so that our businesses here in Georgia and across the Southeast understand the very real opportunity that exists in the Indian market. Thank you, Mary. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> George, I have a different question at a little bit higher level. And the question is that uh, the bilateral trade between USA and India right now is about $150 billion. And what we have been reading, uh, you know, especially folks like myself and all the friends who are attending here, that the trade and commerce between USA and India is going to rise astronomically. And the reason uh, we say so is that, first of all, the great relationship uh, President Trump and Prime Minister Modi share, that's uh, the, one of the factors of that. Uh, you know, President Trump was in India in February. And uh, the second thing is that uh, we have about 4 million plus uh, folks like myself Indian Americans, NRIs are big uh, sort of change agents in that direction. And also because of geopolitical reasons, especially in defense and other areas, the uh, relationship between US and India at the highest level is increasing tremendously, especially with formation of Quad, where USA and India have joined Australia and Japan to have defense forces as well as strategic activities going on. What do you envisage uh, coming down the pipe uh, for uh, our attendees to note that this relationship may go up to $500 billion in less than five years or so? Yeah, well, I think for one thing, I think a lot of what, uh, what we need to and are trying to do and improve on is enablement, right? There's all this opportunity out there and organizations like mine and Mary and others um, are trying to make sure that we're enabling 
companies to take advantage of these opportunities, both from an import and export protest perspective and foreign direct investment perspective and so on. So in terms of, um, you know, taking it to the next level, I think one of the big advantages India has is that just there's just this enormous willingness to trade, right? I mean, they want to do business with the United States. It's, I mean, exporting always has its complications, but there's this willingness to to make sure that the process works, that the opportunities are there, that the people and mechanisms and so on are in place to help enable companies to take advantage of the opportunities. You were mentioning the uh, the big inc increase and in improvement in, in political ties and all that. I think all of that's going to lead to just an enormous increase. I mean, it's a very friendly place for U.S. companies to be doing business. Thank you, George. Uh, well, now that brings me, uh, gives me a uh, uh, real pleasure to say that we have successfully concluded our session one. I want to thank uh, my partner, uh, uh, Dr. McIntyre from Georgia Tech Cyber, Georgia Tech, Dr. Eve Butler, Mary Waters from State of Georgia, Josh Tracy from US Department of Commerce, and David Hartnett from Metro Atlanta Chamber of Commerce. Thank you.